Welcome to today's Solid Edge blog. Uh, today's topic is Solid Edge Frame Wizard. So I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a frame in Solid Edge. I'll show you some of the new functions we have in SD6. And uh, the way we're going to start off though is just kind of doing uh, the old school way. Uh, just by creating a few sketches and driving those sketches and I'll show you what some of the features we have in, this, in the uh, Frame Wizard. So let me go ahead and get to an assembly. All right, so solid edge assembly is where the actual frame wizard command is. All right, so let me go ahead and initiate the frame wizard. All right, so what we're going to go ahead and do is create some sketches. <clears throat> we have a couple different ways to create sketches in the actual frame wizard. We have just your basic sketch tools, and we also have what they call Path Express that lets you create uh, sketches between points and things like that. So, or you can use a combination of both. I'm going to go ahead and use a combination on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch to start with. Let's go ahead and create a rectangular, rectangular profile. So let me throw some dimensions on here. So let's go ahead and lock this down by making it 30 by 24. Perfect. Let's go ahead and uh, close our profile out. All right, so there's our first sketch profile. All right, so what we do is tell what type of component cross-section we want to use on that sketch. All right, so if we look under frame, we have under our uh, tools here, under the frame, under solid edge SD6 frames, we have anti DIN ex different extrusions. So here we have a, just a, a handful of cross-sections. So if you need to add your own profile, it's a very simple process. All you have to do is draw a four inch section of whatever uh, profile you would want to use. Um, you know, if you'd like to put 2x4s, 2x6s, 2x8s in the frame section, that way you can do um, whatever you want. Make some decks, uh, sheds, that's what I've used it for several times. Uh, we have a lot of structural shapes in here, so I'm going to go ahead and use these for the example. Let's uh, use a 2x2 two two angle iron. Alright, so let's go ahead, drag a fence around that, let it generate. Alright, so here's our angle iron. I want to go ahead and do the draw this in the positive direction. So for this situation, my angle is facing the incorrect direction. Not an issue here. We can easily rotate that around. So you notice that all these are actually rotated. If I just want to have one rotate, I can go ahead and deselect that and just tell which one I want to rotate. But in this situation, let's get them all to rotate 180 degrees. There we go. So let me zoom this up so you can see what we're doing here. All right, so we have a picture frame kind of deal. So, but the legs are to the inside. I want the legs on the outside, so it's just a, a quick toggle to tell that cross-section to have the leg go out. And there's my initial sketch. It's to the inside of this profile. Well, I drew uh, the outside, so I know the, the actual volume that I want to make this part fit inside. Uh, so let's go ahead and move this cross-section. So we have this tools for def defined points. And you know what? Let's go ahead and use the bottom portion of that leg. So we can even use key points. So if I have a specific key point, a midpoint, a sketch point, somewhere I want to grab, I can actually use my key points. This one, let's just use the outside bottom centroid, and it snaps us to the outside edge of that sketch. All right. Uh, right now we're at a 45 degree miter corner as well. Uh, we do have some other options. So for example, uh, maybe this corner right here uh, should be a butt corner. All right, so you can go ahead and select it, and you can say, you know what, instead of being a mitered, let's go ahead and make that a butt. All right, so that kind of gives you a long to short. Uh, if I do it the opposite, it'll just flip it that direction. You know, you can actually say no frame uh, section at all. You know, let's go ahead and roll that around the corner there. Or you can say, you know what, extend it by a specific distance. That way we can come back and trim it to our own needs. Yeah, but again, this one, you know, 45 degree is kind of what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that at a 45 degree corner. All right, there we go. So instead of me having to create a reference plane and go ahead and uh, creating a sketch off in a specific distance, I'm going to use some of the tools that we have in Solid Edge Assembly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close our frame wizard right back out to the assembly. I'm going to go ahead and mirror this. I'm going to go ahead and mirror this to a specific uh, location on the on this other side. So let's go ahead and create a, a reference plane to do that with. Uh, let's go ahead and say... This is going to be, let's make this 48 inches long overall. So let's go ahead and make that just an offset of 24. Now we can just go ahead and do the mirror on our frame components. And the software is intelligent enough to understand 
that that's actually a rotated profile, not necessarily a mirrored profile. You can make it a mirrored profile if you like, and or you can exclude that. So if you don't want one of the particular frame components in there, just keep it off the list. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and keep those on there. So there we go. All right. So again, I'm done with that. It's good the distance. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back into frame. And like I said, I'm going to do a combination. Let's go ahead and just do a line segment. All right. I want to show you how this works. So we have this little trident that pops up when you go into line segments. And again, we have our key point snaps. So I'm going to go ahead. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and zoom this up so I can make sure I get the end point here. All right. As you notice, my cursor kind of moves 360 degrees. All right. That's where this guy comes into play. I can either go ahead and just pick the axis that I want to draw in, or I like using the keyboard shortcut. So Z for the axis. So as I toggle through the Z key, it'll change my axis location. Maybe I want to draw planar. For example, if I don't want to go from that corner to that corner, maybe I want to go to the corner down here. Well, if you use the X key, that'll change the planar orientation. So I can go maybe make a cross section here, or a cross beam, I should say. But again, I want to go ahead and do it in the Y direction. So let me zoom this up. Go ahead and tie to the key point I need. So there is my sketch tied to the geometry. So let's go ahead and create a frame component again. This time, let's use a square tubing, two by two. And accept that. All right, so again, I could go ahead and go back and create multiple line segments, pick corners, pick corners, pick corners. Or again, I can go ahead and close my frame out. Maybe I don't want to uh, create a pattern with this. All right, so it's easy enough to go into create a pattern. So I'm just going ahead and do a sketch on this reference plane. And again, my component is in this top right hand corner, so I want to use that as my uh, initiation point. So I'm going to go ahead and create a rectangular pattern. All right, so as I try to pick this, you notice I get no geometry. I do get the outside corner. Well, that's because it's picking from the sketch that I'm on. All right, but we have a tool now called Peer Locate. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create that rectangular pattern with a peer locate on. Now you notice I get endpoints, and center points, midpoints, etc. So now I can go from here to this outside corner. There we go. My profile is locked. To turn black. I have. Uh, I'm going to make a three by two. You know what? I can actually come over here and uh, make this a three by three. There we go. And again, let's go ahead and uh, suppress. This middle one, well, because there's really no way I could have a frame component floating in the middle. So let me go ahead and finish that off. And there is my sketch to create my pattern with. So now just a simple pattern feature. Go ahead and accept that, pick my pattern, and there is my frame components. And again, this sketch is tied to it. So if I ever go back, again, all these are tied to the sketches. So if I go back and change my initial sketch, which was the actual size here. If I say make this uh, maybe 36 by 30. And up there. Oops. What did I? Well, let's go back in the frame and see what happened there. Actually, I'm not sure what happened there. Quick enough to fix, though. So all I have to do go back is find the frame component, edit definition on that, say, so you know what, go ahead and go back to that corner right here. There we go. So for some reason it got off that corner there. Oops, I still don't have it completely right. I need to go back to, excuse me, that outside corner. There we go. So that was my mistake. There we go. So now we have our 6x6, six six, easy enough to fix. Uh, the pattern goes and updates and moves with all the frame components, so it's a, just a fast, easy way to create geometry. All right, so now let's show you some of the new ways. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. All right, that's for future reference here. Let me show you the basic first before I get to the complicated stuff. All right, so in ST6, they allow you to now create a a body inside a part and what I've created is just a couple sketches uh, the reason I've done this I've created a couple sketches in synchronous uh, because we actually get control over the sketches and geometry with the steering wheel in synchronous and also just went and created a, a quick protrusion I just lofted it from one sketch to the other uh, in this situation you notice it, it's kind of got this toggle to construction 
Uh, the reason why is if, if you don't toggle to construction, you're going to see the geometry in the assembly when I use it to create the frame with. And of course, you just want it to be a construction body so it doesn't actually show up when you create a draft. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, bring this into the assembly simply just by going new, create an assembly. Tell it to use my assembly ANSI template or whatever template you want. And again, I told you it's not going to show up because it's a surface, but you can easily quickly say, you know what, turn my surfaces on so I can actually use them temporarily. All right, so there's the geometry that I can actually pick from now. All right, so let's go into frame again. <clears throat> and I'm going to actually create the exact same feature that we just did again uh, in the previous assembly. All right, I'm going to go back to the frame. I'm going to use my 2x2 two two angle, just quickly grab grab a fence and I actually inadvertently picked an edge I don't want that's an easily quick shift deselect to go ahead and grab that go ahead and accept that and again incorrect location so let's go ahead quickly just flip that 180 degrees flip the corner go ahead and tell it to go to that bottom corner edge there we go positioned good enough for now all right so let's go ahead and uh, create my uh, second we've got a square tube in two by two there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Alright, so there's our square tubing in the corners. You know, I can go ahead and create uh, sketches on this face where I can go and uh, draw geometry. Again, remember the tool pe uh, the tools piers selection? I can go ahead and turn that on that way. I can go ahead and find the midpoint of that guy. Maybe we need a, a, cross, a cross support in here or something to that effect to give it some strength. So now I can go ahead and easily create a... Uh, Rectangular tube right there. Again, let's go ahead and push that to the inside edge. There we go. Nice enough. All right, so what we're going to do here, since I created this using this frame base, uh, let's go ahead and close my frame assembly. Let's go ahead and save this first before I do anything. All right, let's go ahead and just edit this guy in place. All right, so again, I told you that I drew these sketches in synchronous. That allows me to do things like this, where I can actually grab the steering wheel. Uh, since this is a lofted feature, uh, you know, I could go as crazy as I want to with it. I could actually take that and actually, you know, start twisting that around and doing some funky shapes like that. This one, I'm gonna since it's lofted, I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a, maybe a, a, a 16 inch drop. That should be good for now. Let's go ahead and save that. Of course, once I go ahead and close right back to my assembly, it's going to immediately start updating my frames. So that'll say take a second as it's thinking. And there we have it. All right. This guy we could easily go back and go ahead and modify. I can go ahead. Let's go. Let's go back in the frame and actually do that. Uh, we have the ability to go ahead and cope. To Oops, did I grab the right one? Let me expand my frame components out and grab. make sure I grab... There we go. And I also want to uh, let it... Uh, we have an in condition in that's new to, to this as well. Let's go ahead and do this bottom one. And we have what they call Extend Trim 2. I'm going to go ahead and say extend that guy to that frame component and you can see it actually goes and matches and actually cuts and copes to follow that corner. Uh, let's go ahead and do the same thing to this top edge. Uh, let's go ahead and modify that top edge and I got the wrong one, sorry. Say this edge and I want to trim back to the inside. There we go. So now it actually matches that sketch edge. So Let's do one more thing to this. All right, so now that I have that inside corner matching, I could obviously get and mirror that to the other side quickly enough. Let's go ahead and double click this and go back into it. Uh, this time, let's take these sketches instead of uh, just pushing it down. Let's do something a little more complicated. Uh, let's move this to this edge and let's rotate this. Actually, let's rotate that face 12 degrees in that direction. There we go. So it's twisted and or rotated now. So let me close and return back to the assembly. So it's doing this update right now. There we go. 
So let me look at the side view here. So again, we have this following this, the sketch profiles, and of course I have this tilted back at the correct angle. So you can quickly see how, how fast you can create geometry inside a solid edge uh, frame wizard and how complex you can actually create that. Uh, to add to that, let me switch over to this guy. All right, so simple enough. We have a rectangular, to, or excuse me, a square tubing that I have rolled, and these are just some straight tubes that we have here. All right, so what I did is I actually created a, uh, a, a variable link to this guy. So we have a pure variable. Let me turn the part on so you can actually see what I'm modifying. So it's a simple feature that's a loft, uh, or it's a, it's a tube with some lofted features on there and a pattern. All right, let me go ahead and uh, don't really need to see that to actually do it. So let me go ahead and make some changes to this, and you'll quickly see how complex and how uh, fancy you can get with this. Uh, let's make this a... Uh, 72 inch diameter all right let's change this to maybe a 60 inch angle and let's change this from 4 to maybe let's add 10 all right I'm going to go ahead and close this out and as it does it's again it live update and there we go so you can quickly see how fast and um, how accurate again these are all nice corners so we can go through some well beads on there. You can get some center of gravities. Uh, even if you want to go to the point where you want to actually inspect this and actually check for a weight, you can go ahead and say, you know what, these are all going to be steel. Go ahead and update that. Uh, so currently looking at about 4,000, uh, excuse me, shoot, 42,000 pounds. Yeah, this is a good chunk of it's about eight feet in diameter and about probably nine feet tall so it is pretty good two by two inch square tubing of course we can display the center of gravity uh, that way if you ever need to put lifting lugs on your frame components you can go ahead and see where the actual CG is uh, so you can put your lifting lugs accordingly all right I think uh, that about concludes uh, today's uh, blog on solid edge frame wizard uh, if y'all ever have any questions please feel free to, uh, feel free to contact us at swoosh and I'll be more than happy to work with you and uh, show what else we can do with it. All right. Thank you very much.